Greetings and salutations to all electronic dance music producers all across the globe. This is John Darkarps here with a little tutorial on some fundamentals of synthesis and synth design and synth programming. If you're one of these people who are, um, you know, if you're new and you are afraid of synths or afraid of designing synth sounds, they look a bit too complicated and you just dial up a preset, um, I want to help you get away from that and um, I want to help you get comfortable programming your own synth sounds. So it's really gratifying for me anyway. So, like I said, it's going to be uh, like a demystification of a, a bunch of synth fundamentals and I hope you find them useful. So, um, to help with this, um, I have uh, loaded up an oscilloscope, um, which I got for free off the interwebs, um, Smart Electronics um, S Maxoscope is what it's called. Uh, it's free. Um, so feel free to get one of these if you want um, to sort of play along. Um, and in addition, in the signal path, I have a Logic uh, EQ plugin with a spectral analyzer loaded up so that we can see what's going on when we make synth sounds. Um, so we get a, you know, a nice, uh, useful visual feedback. Um, it will be useful for us. So with regards to synth design, there's, there's basically three stages um, in, in any synth. Uh, we start with oscillator generation. Um, then there are filters that filter frequencies out of those oscillators that we have generated. And finally, there is an amplitude um, uh, section where the, um, where the signal is turned up and shaped in a dynamic way. Um, so the final uh, volume shaping of the sound, and then it goes out into the mix. Um, and as a, as a kind of auxiliary fourth stage, there is also modulation. So we've got oscillator generation, then filtering, then the amplitude, and then next to all those, at all times, we have modulation. And we will look in uh, more detail at all of those stages. Um, so uh, I'm quickly going to run through the you know oscillator, filter, amplitude, and modulation um, parameters that you will typically see on a synth without getting into too much detail. And then in the second um, part of this tutorial, we're going to dive deeper into the oscillator stage and really um, get into some kind of advanced level stuff. Um, so, without further ado, we're just going to, as I said, look quickly at the oscillator stage of this synth. This is the Virus TI um, plugin for my TI Snow. Um, this is the synth that I use the most, so that's what I'm using to demonstrate. As I said, these are fundamental concepts which should work, that will work on any synth. So the idea is that you should be able to use any synth at your disposal on the basis of knowing some of these fundamentals. So in the oscillator stage, um, this is where we choose which oscillators we would like to generate when we hit a note on message. And you know, here are the classic, um, classic mode of oscillators that every classic synth always had. Um, we have a sine wave, we have a, um, and then in this case it's sweepable to a sawtooth wave, and then we have square waves. Uh, and um, in addition, the square wave, which is also known as a pulse wave, will have a pulse width control, which, as you can see, literally controls the um, width of the, th it effectively controls the thickness, the harmonic thickness of the, uh, of the pulse wave, as you can see. Drag the pulse width across. The, uh, the waveform gets progressively thinner. The audio content gets progressively thinner until the wave completely disappears from the spectrum entirely. Um, so those are basic fundamental oscillators that you will see in pretty much any any synth. Um, in addition, there are some auxiliary extra kind of functional um, oscillators. Uh, so, for example, um, we have a sub oscillator which will create a, um, a simple oscillator one octave below your oscillator one. Uh, and in this case, I have the volume control for that, plus I have a waveform selection option of either a square wave or a um, triangle wave, which is basically like a sine wave. So now, we've got a sub oscillator running through the mix as well. And if I turn it down, you can see it disappears from the oscilloscope. Um, oscillator 3 here is another auxiliary oscillator, just a kind of a simple oscillator generator, really no, not very many controls on it whatsoever, but you can choose a few of the basic um, waveforms, plus a whole bunch of wavetable um, waves, which are very uh, complicated um, and potentially fun. Uh, 
and then what else do we have? We have some very advanced level um, uh, waveform generation here, for example, with the hypersaw, making many sawtooth waves at once, which you can detune. And then there's the wavetable uh, system, which a lot of synths do have, uh, where you can choose some very, very unusual um, waveforms and blend between them. So, I don't know, just as as an example, uh, Robot Wars, that sounds like something you might find in a dubstep track. <laughs> um, actually not, it's pretty tinny and shit. But you can sweep through the wavetable here and get a whole bunch of different interesting sounding oscillators. Ah, oh, it's quite cool down low. Uh, and in addition to being able to select all these tasty waveforms, there will almost always be frequency modulation uh, and um, ring modulation, otherwise known as amplitude modulation, controls in your oscillator generator section. That stuff's a bit more complicated, so I'm going to try and explain that to you in the next half of this lesson. In addition, you can obviously pitch and detune the various oscillators here. This, uh, this second oscillator has a uh, detune function on it, which basically uh, detunes the oscillator next to the oscillator one. So, uh, if I put this here, see as we detune the sound, it becomes thicker. Whereas if it's not detuned, it's a very sort of stable, um, pure sound. Um, hardwired modulation, some basic ones going on. Um, the uh, amount that the uh, filter envelope affects um, sending to frequency modulation, the amount that vol velocity affects how much frequency modulation is applied, uh, the amount how much um, envelope will affect the pitch of oscillator 2, and so on. So very, be uh, very brief um, overview of the oscillator stage. Oh yes, and the unison stage as well allows you to basically thicken, double up anything that's going on in the oscillator stage. So that's potentially very powerful too. Um, it effectively doubles up your entire oscillator stage or triples it or quadruples it or whatever. Uh, and then finally, um, in the oscillator stage, you will have some ability to mix uh, to balance between all the different oscillators uh, that you have been using in your synth pad. So, you know, in this case, I can balance between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 here. I can mix in oscillator 3. I can mix in the sub oscillator. I can mix in the ring, ring modulation sound. I can mix in the noise. Um, and again, you're going to have that kind of control going on in your synth in one way or another, the ability to balance between your sound sources, your oscillators. Okay, so moving on to the filter stage. I'm just going to reset this patch. Moving on to the filter stage, um, effectively filters remove frequencies. That's what they do. And there are different um, modes in your filters that will um, have a different effect on your audio. As I'm sure you probably already know what a low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and band stop or band reject or um, notch typically known as a notch filter. So in the case of this synth, we have two uh, filters that can be run in series or parallel. In series means the audio goes into the first filter, uh, then goes into a saturation or overdrive stage, and then goes into a second filter. And you can um, have complicated uh, uh, arrangements going on between your two filters to create a specific type of sound. Um, uh, you um, will also usually have some kind of control over the slope or perhaps it would be referred to as the number of poles on your filters. So in this case, um, I really only have two controls in normal mode over the slope of this low pass filter and that's what these two buttons here do. If I click on series four, it's a four pole filter. There are two poles per filter. Series 6 makes it four, full, four poles per filter, and basically what it does is it, it dictates how strongly, how steeply uh, filters above, uh, frequencies above or below the cutoff point are cut off by the filter. So on a two a pole filter here, um, you hear a certain amount of frequencies cut off, and then on the four pole filter, it's going to be even more severe. It's not that noticeable. But in, in combination with a second filter, it can have um, potentially powerful effects depending on how you've set up the rest of your patch. Filter envelope control, um, very, very important to sculpt 
uh, the shape of a sound. Um, as a very quick demonstration, here we are using a sawtooth wave. The filter is low, low passing. Um, now, if you wanted to add some attack, some kind of bright attack to the sound, you could use the filter, turn up the uh, filter, um, uh, sorry, the filter envelope, turn up the filter envelope amount, uh, and then maybe add a touch of resonance and keep the decay time short. And the filter will fall from the fully open position down to a relatively closed position over a relatively short amount of time. The decay knob here is short. Okay, that's even too long. So this kind of control gives you very, very basic, fundamental, but powerful control over um, the content, the harmonic content of uh, your sound, uh, of, of your synth patch. Um, I was talking about poles earlier, steepness. Um, this filter here, filter one, has an analog mode which allows you to select um, a bunch of other um, uh, even more steep uh, cutoff curves. Um, this is one pole or, or, or less steep actually, so you have a, a range between one pole and four poles on the filter. And so, again, demonstrate that in action. So that's what the poles mean if you ever see poles on a filter. Um, as I said, you can route the um, filters in series or parallel. Um, if route is in series, you'll often get some kind of a diagram showing you the signal path. So the audio goes into the first filter, then goes into a saturation stage, which is effectively like an overdrive. Um, in the case of the analog mode here, um, when I turn the saturation up, it's just a sort of a, a, a virtual analog distortion. Um, it's a bit grimier, especially if you turn up the resonance and start screaming it. And that's because the, um, uh, the saturation stage is uh, basically crunching all these very sharp harmonics that have been introduced by the resonance. Whereas if we turn that off, it's just going to be very squealy. Not very nice, actually. I don't like that sound. Um, in addition to um, the, these basic controls, there are, again, some hardwired modulations. As I already showed you, the envelope amount, envelope to filter amount, very um, fundamental, basic, classic, um, important control. And then you're even able to control how much this modulation is affected by velocity. So if you have um, a, a velocity to uh, filter one envelope modulation knob turned way up to maximum, that will mean that the harder you hit the, uh, the key, the more of um, this envelope is applied. So if you hit it very softly, no envelope will be applied at all, and it's going to be very low passed, like that. If you hit it very hard, well, I need to turn up the envelope amount total. It now opens the, uh, opens the filter to maximum and follows the envelope control at its most powerful. Another control you might encounter in the filter stage of your synth um, is uh, a, a key base and a key follow um, parameter. Now what this does is it actually um, tells the synth to uh, have the filter cutoff affected by the position uh, on the keyboard. Now that makes sense because you might want to um, make a patch that you play really across the entire width of the um, uh, of the spectrum. So you might play it. Uh, you, you might play low frequencies, low notes, using it as well as playing very high frequencies. Now you might want to not have some of the um, higher harmonics in the spectrum when you're playing the kind of bass patch in that, in that patch. So you can automati automatically have the filter cutoff be low for any notes that you are playing low on the register, whereas that filter cutoff will open up as you play higher and higher up the keyboard. Um, and to demonstrate this, I can um, make this filter a self-oscillating filter by turning analog mode on turning the resonance up to maximum. We're going to balance the filter only to hear filter one, and then I'm going to tell the oscillator to basically be silent um, by balancing to oscillator one only and turning the pulse width to maximum. So we effectively have a silent oscillator stage. This is just to prove 
um, how self-oscillating um, filters work and how using the key follow command um, or modulation um, really does, truly does change the cutoff um, point on the filter. And without the key follow on, when I hit a note, um, we hear absolutely nothing. And that is because we're very, 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 very high up on the cutoff point, um, which is effectively creating a tone way higher than we can hear. So as I sweep it down, we start getting into the audible frequency uh, spectrum. And as we keep sweeping down and down and down, sweep all the way through a whole bunch of audible pitches. That's already kind of fun. And imagine the possibilities um, using that type of filter with some modulation. Um, but uh, just to demonstrate the key follow function, if I turn this up to maximum, uh, and I can then um, basically, as I play chromatically up the keyboard, the uh, the filter cutoff will also move up and up and up, and you'll actually hear distinct notes. Um, I just need to now set the key base um, to an appropriate point, whereby my lowest note is going to be playing at a, at a, a, a pitch that we can actually hear. So, as you here we have a sort of a sustained tone and as I play up chromatically the keyboard effectively what's happening is the filter cutoff is moving up so that is just by way of demonstration how that function works um, potentially very powerful potentially very creative um, tool that you may find is useful for you uh, and finally um, we get to the amplifier stage which is obviously pretty simple controls the overall output volume of your patch, uh, and there's some hardwired uh, modulations, for example, velocity to, velocity to volume, the harder you hit the note, the louder the patch will, will be, uh, and then your amplifier envelope, allowing you to shape the overall dynamics of the sound, very important to help you make a pad sound, as opposed to a plinky plonky, you know, blippy, bleepy sound. So, uh, and in addition, there will often be some um, send levels for effects, um, internal effects in your synthesizer. Your synth may have a bunch of onboard effects, and the amplifier stage may be the place where you will find um, the, uh, the option to route um, your sounds uh, to any kind of internal effects. For example, here we have some reverb, onboard reverb here. Uh, and also some delay too. I'm going to turn that up, which is effectively the same as turning this up. Uh, and then, you know, add a bit of feedback. Oops. Add some delay time. Simple stuff. So that has been a very simplified uh, overview of some of the core functions and concepts that go on in, in synthesizers. Uh, and in the next half of this lesson, we're going to look more closely at modulation. Um, I'll try and explain, you know, uh, really what it what it means and what you can do with it. Uh, and we're also going to look in much greater detail at the oscillator stage. Uh, and we're going to get a little more in depth uh, into combining um, different oscillators together to create, uh, you know, powerful results. So uh, stay tuned.